Hello learners. In this lecture, we will see how the airport planning has to be done. So the planning of an airport is not a simple process, right? If you want to construct a house and all, it's a very straightforward. You have a plot with you. You go to architect or you go to a civil engineer, ask him to get you uh, make a plan for you. He'll give a plan. That's it. That's a very simple process, right? But when you go for the planning of an airport, it's not as simple as that. As a, ma as a matter of fact, it is such a complex process that the analysis of one activity without regard to the other effect on the other activities may not provide with the acceptable solutions. The planning of an airport cannot be taken as an isolated planning, right? You just cannot uh, consider that I want to do a planning of an airport. That will not happen. You have to look into the surrounding areas, the other things and all, and only then you can come to a uh, conclusion all those by, by taking all those into consideration we can uh, you know uh, plan plan the airport layout so to put it in a better way so let us say i have a this is a plot what i have let us say this is a plot which belongs to me i'm speaking for the construction of a house and then we'll try to you know see how it works out for the airport planning let us say this is my site what i have and i want to construct a house here so it's a very straightforward process right so this is a Give me a minute. Yeah. So this is a plot what I have. So based on the plot, I'll go to the engineer. I'll tell I tell him that this is a plot what I have. Uh, put a plan for this particular plot. So what the engineer will do is that he is going to give a plan something like this. Let us say this is a plan what he has given. It's a very straightforward process. But tomorrow when you go for the construction of the airport or planning of an airport, then only with this plan, it's not sufficient for us. That is only by considering this is the area where you're doing the airport is not sufficient for me. I need to take care of the surrounding places also. When I was constructing a house, for me, it was not of much importance who is, uh, who is you know, staying in the nearby areas, what road is passing by, what road is passing here, right? What is, you know, uh, topographical features of this area and all that is not much importance for me. But when we go for the airport planning, I need to take care of everything. What road is passing here? What are the, you know, community? I mean, what all kind of buildings we have in the surrounding area, right? And how much land we have for the future development, all those things we need to take. We also need to take, uh, see the terrain of the particular area, how is the terrain, the topography, each and everything, the minute details we need to consider. And also we need to take care of the surrounding areas, what construction they have, what kind of buildings we have, all those things we need to take into consideration, right? So that is why it's told that it's not a, yeah, let me go back. Yeah, that is why it is written here. It is not an isolated planning. Only for single thing, you cannot come to a conclusion. You have to consider a lot of other factors, yeah. So it has to be integrated with the existing and accepted highway, rail, and other ground transportation system. Next is, in the past, the airport planning was made by keeping in a view the local aviation requirements only. But the concept of airport planning of the recent times has undergone a radical change. The airport system plan has not only to satisfy the local needs of the aviation, but at the same time, it should be seen that it fits into the overall development of the entire region where you're constructing the airport uh, and that particular state and also in terms of country, right? There should be good connectivity and all. So keeping all these things, we have to plan in such a way that it fits in each of these things what we have understood. Yeah. So the airport planning is mainly concerned with the following three aspects. First is educate access to the metropolitan area, right? The second one is securing sufficient airspace for access to the air. And the last one is sufficient land for carrying out the ground operations. So these are the three main aspects where the airport planning is mainly concerned with. You can see this is the runway what we have. We need to consider each and everything. What is the surrounding area what we have no? and uh, water construction we have. And we have to also see that in future, if I want to do the extension of this, whether I have, whether I have any uh, suitable place here or not. Right. So that is what you mean by all the three points that is educate access to the metropolitan area, securing sufficient airspace for access to the air and sufficient land for carrying out the ground operations, ground operation, in the sense the takeoff, the landing and all other the cargo activities or whatever activities you are supposed to do. You need to take care of all those things. Enough space should be there. Yeah. So following are the factors which influence the location of an airport. So there are a few factors which influence the location of an airport. The first one is the 
future development the second one is the availability of the utilities third is the development of the surrounding area the fourth one is airport use the fifth one is topography the sixth one is accessibility to the community the seventh one is presence to the other airports the eighth one is obstructions ninth one is visibility the tenth is the wind and then we have economy of the construction so all these are the different factors which influence the location of an airport whenever we try to do the planning of an airport and all we need to consider all these factors and based on that we'll have to plan our airport so we'll try to see each of these uh, points uh, in a better way the first one is the future development as we have seen yeah so coming to the future development the possibility for the expansion should be ensured by selection of a site that is not constrained by built up property railroad yards mountains rivers harbors or other features that prohibit the enlargement except at the excessive cost day by day the necessity of air transportation is increasing due to globalization and it will be necessary to lengthen the runways to provide additional support facilities and to expand the terminal facilities taking into consideration the anticipated future developments in the airport larger area should be acquired initially right so whenever we acquire the land and all we consider all these things from keeping future point of view because in future the chances that the airport whatever constructing may have to take uh, more incoming flights and all it has to so many people and all right or let us say you want to put up another terminal and all then you need to have enough uh, space so that is why future development keeping this in mind we have to plan in such a way the next one is the availability of the utilities so the availability of the utilities such as the electric power gas telephone water sewers and public transportation is an important factor to be investigated if these utilities are not available the cost of providing must be considered right next is the development of su surrounding area the proximity of the airport site to the residential areas schools and hospitals should be avoided whenever possible right let us say this is a place where you are planning to put up a airport now we have to make sure in the proximity that is proximity in the sense in the nearby area you don't have any school let us say you don't have a school here or let us say you don't have a hospital here because whenever there is a take off and the landing operation uh, of a aircraft it will uh, it will be a lot of you know noise and all so people in the school and let us say in the hospital they should not feel distressed because of all these things so keeping all these things in mind it is written here the proximity of a airport site to the residential areas the schools the hospital should be avoided whenever possible suitable zoning regulation should be imposed to control the use of land adjacent to the airport so that conflicts in the future are avoided right or let us say your uh, let us say here the airport has been already done but here there is one land one land here and uh, let us say someone wanted to construct a school or let other things so even before once you are done with all these things you have to do a proper zoning of that zoning in the sense you have to tell from here let us say up to 1 km let us say half a km no construction of school hospitals or residential area should happen so that is suitable zoning regulations has have to be imposed so that what will happen this problem will not occur in future yeah the next one what we have is the airport use the selection of the site depends upon the use of airport that is whether for a civilian civilian or for the military operations we have seen during the classification of the airport that we have civilian airport we have military airport in civilian we have uh, you know uh, the domestic the international and all right so however during the emergency a civilian airport are taken over by the defense that we know during an emergency and all whatever civilian airports we have no they are taken over by the defense in case of emergency landing and all so this is the another point which we need to consider yeah so the next is the topography as i mentioned the terrain should be relatively flat to avoid excessive grading cost what do you mean by this so whatever land we have no it has to be as far as possible the terrain should be somewhere in this way like it has to be flat but if it's something in this way the terrain you know if the land is something in this way then what will happen the proper grading tomorrow if before the start of the construction we need to properly level all this surface then again what will happen a lot of cost will go because let us say somewhere you have to do cutting and all let us say land is something in this way right in this way okay i'm drawing some random thing so here there is a hill right 
so again you need to do the cutting in this portion again if there is a cut here then you have to do the filling here so you have to find one average size and based on that wherever there is a cutting you have to do the cutting and wherever there is a down that is we have to do the filling here so if you get a land something like this then again additional cost is involved here to get a level surface yeah the next is the elevated sites are preferably to those in the lowlands because they are usually free from obstruction in the approach zone less subjected to fog erratic winds and easy to drain right if you have a elevated sites uh, sites and all then what will happen uh, whatever water will fall due to the rain and all it will be easy to drain out a valley however requires less grading ground transportation system would be comparatively better yeah soil should be studied yeah this is also very important the soil should be studied and evaluated for the effect on grading drainage and pavements the nature of the soil influences the cost of construction right also we need to check the soil whether the soil is good or not like in the geotechnical engineering you have done the test on soil like you know uh, the permeability test then uh, vein shear test and there are a lot of lot of the tests like the liquid limit the plastic limit test and all we have studied in geotechnical engineering lab so all those tests you need to do on the soil so that you get an idea what kind of soil you have and also what is the grading of a soil i mean what uh, how is the you know permeability of the soil whether it will allow the drainage to flow through that or not how is that whether it will retain the water through it or it will release the water through that all those things has to be studied but those things will be studied by the geotech consultants ideally the site should have a sandy or gravelly soil that offers satisfactory foundation for the runway pavements without excessively thick sub base and costly sub drainage system natural drainage drainage is most desirable the ability ability to dispose of storm water should be evaluated so all these things you need to consider even before you start with the work so that uh, let us say you have put up a runway okay um, airport and if the soil is not good and all then during the rain what will happen the water will store here right so that should not happen again it will be difficult for the uh, aircraft to do the take off and the landing operation if there is a storage of water so proper drainage has to be there so that the moment it starts to rain within few minutes the water should get drained and this area should be clean right so all these things depends on the soil conditions so that has to be studied correctly yeah next is accessibility to the community accessibility to the community is essential to preserve the speed advantage of the air transportation in general accessibility is measured in time rather than distance sites near modern express in highways are to be sought and those bounded by traffic congested streets avoided on the other hand the site should not be so remote from the community has to require excessive transportation time the availability of the public transportation facilities such as bus taxi etc may also improve the business potential at the airport so as far as possible you need to make sure it has good connectivity to the taxi the buses and all next is the presence of other airport airports the site should be selected at a considerable distance from the existing airport so that the aircraft landing in one airport does not interfere with the movement of aircraft at the other airport the minimum distance between the adjacent airport will depend upon the volume type of air traffic operating facilities and etc right you cannot have a two airport in a nearby area let us say this one airport here and there is another airport in a closer so then what will happen it will be difficult during the landing and take off operations right because since it is a airport most of the time will be putting up the light and all so it will be difficult in both the airport there will be lighting system on so the pirate may find it difficult to land in which area in which uh, runway and also during the take off and the landing operation it will create a problem so keeping all these things in mind the planning of airport should happen The next one, what we have is the obstruction. Air approaches to the proposed airport should be free of obstacles such as mountains, hills, tall buildings, transmission lines, chimneys, and towers. It's understood from here. Next is the visibility. The site selected should be free from the visibility, reducing the conditions such as fog, smoke, and haze. The following visibility of lowers the traffic capacity of aircraft. Next is the wind. The site should be located to the windward direction of the city. so that the minimum smoke smoke from the city is blown over the site right whenever you put a airport and all all this wind study has to be done because wind is one thing which will actually affect the landing and the take off operation of the aircraft 
So keeping all these things in mind, the proper site has to be selected. And the last is the economy of the construction. The availability of the local construction materials plays an important role on the cost of a project, the cost of construction and maintenance of airport complex in general, and the runway, taxiway, and appearance. We'll try to understand what is runway, the taxiway, appearance in the upcoming lectures. In particular, greatly influenced by the availability of the construction material. Of course, whatever materials we require for the construction of the airport, it should be locally available, right? Let us say if you're doing a construction in this particular area, whatever is required for the construction, let us say the cement, I mean the concrete, um, then let the ingredients for the concrete, like the aggregates, the sand, each and everything, whatever that should be available in the nearby area, so that what will happen? the cost of my project will not increase. Otherwise, if it is like 100 or 150 kilometer away from the site, then again, that will be additional cost to the project. So all these things should be kept in mind. And based on that, the planning of airport will be done. Yeah, so I hope you got an idea regarding how the planning of airport should happen. What all are the different things that we need to consider before we actually do the construction of an airport. So we'll see you back in the next lecture. Thank you.